Hi, my name's Alex, and in this video, I'm going to show you the three steps to selling digital products in the creative space. Making the product, setting up shop, and how to do marketing, how to get an audience and customers. Let's get started. So making the product is almost the easier part. It comes naturally to creative people to, well, create things, right? So creating a digital product is probably something you've thought about, you have lots of ideas, and compared to the rest of the business side of products, it's easier. Let me give you three things though that are gonna help you on your way, and we'll look at each of these in detail. Number one, start small, small products, make it high quality, and package it nicely. If you're a first time product maker, I recommend starting with something small and not going for the big vision, the big idea with lots of moving parts that you may have. That can come later. That's a, it's called a stair-stepping approach. You do some small things, you bundle them for example, and then bit by bit as you gain experience with all the other parts of selling a product, you can make bigger and bigger things. Make it high quality. Make it something that takes in all of your experience and all your skills and make it a really good product. You've already got to boost up because things that seem simple for you that maybe don't take that long for you look like magic for other people that don't have that skill set or don't have that experience. Use that. But whatever you do, if you put something out there in the world, make sure you're proud of it and make it high quality. You need to, in this big marketplace out there, in the in the creative space where there's so many products being sold, you need to stand out. To stand out even more, create a more compelling package. Add some details to the actual product you're selling. For example, you're selling a font, then create a brochure of showing how that font works in different mockups, for example. If you're using ligatures in that font, show them in the booklet as well. Or maybe create some small templates where the font is already embedded, where it makes it look really nice. This just gives the buyer a much better impression of your product when they've bought it. So reviews are going to be great, but it also just looks much nicer. You're going to need them as marketing material anyway. So why not add these little things that aren't going to cost you a lot of time to the product packaging? So this is the more technical part, setting up shop. Now, we're going to have a look at marketplaces. That's something where a lot of digital assets are sold. Adding a payment provider, uh, your own shop to your website. And how do you deliver these products to your customers? How can you create a long-term relationship? The first idea a lot of people have is to sell via a marketplace. We've all used them before to buy stock images, audio, uh, brushes for Procreate, and things like that. But you have to know that the marketplaces take about 50% of the price of your product. So you're not left with a lot at the end. And you're one in a million different creative people and creative assets on those platforms. So you really have to stand out. And it's not the 80% that make most of the money, but more like 20, if not 10 or 5% of the top sellers that actually make money on those platforms. A much better way in my mind is to add the buying part, the shop, to your website directly. Do it from your brand, make it look like your shop and you don't have to compete with other people. There is a payment provider slash e-commerce solution called Paddle. They're great because compared to other payment providers that are out there, they take care of sales tax for you. You don't have to worry about a lot of the business and the financial part. You just get a payment once a month for all the products that you've sold. You have to tax those personally, obviously, but all the sales tax that can be different from country to country, they take care of that. That's great. And we're going to see they're very simple to integrate. They fit nicely into a website. And with an additional product called Boathouse, you can actually make take care of product delivery as well. 
Let's have a quick look at an example of how Paddle integrates into a website, how the experience is, so you get an idea. Um, here I have uh, the homepage of Lana Lauren, who uses Paddle for her products. She is an artist from Vienna, does graphic recording, explainer videos, illustrations, and so on. But she also recently introduced a product section to her homepage. Now, her homepage is built in Webflow, which probably a lot of you know. It's very customizable. This all looks like her branding. And if you look at the product pages, they're also very familiar, right? They look the same style as the other pages on the website. Um, she's adopted the strategy of creating these assets, showing what her products can do, going the extra mile. And the integration with Paddle is fairly simple. Uh, on the right here, you've got a selection of single team or company licenses, for example. And if you want to buy it, Paddle opens as a pop-up within the website. And all this here, there's not a lot of branding from Paddle. You have, a, you have it at the bottom left here. That's necessary for legal reasons because you are selling via Paddle. But the pop-up here doesn't really look all too branded in any way. It looks like just an extension of your website. And your customers will go through that, create the, uh, sorry, add the payment information and purchase your product that way. It's all very integrated. So what is product delivery? Well, the transaction has two parts. One is getting the payment information and processing that payment. And the second part is giving access to your product. That's called product delivery. Boathouse is an add-on to Paddle that does this for you. It gives you a customer portal, like a download portal that's branded the way your website is and gives access to the files to anyone who's purchased your product. If they check out with Paddle, they'll get a link. They can immediately download the files, but they can also come back to your portal months, years later even, and access all their products and all their invoices in one spot. It just rounds out that whole experience. You can add any number of files. You can add licenses to your package or to your product. It's an all-in-one solution for digital product sellers. So you've made the product, you have a way to sell it. Now, who do you sell to? You need customers. And we're gonna do that with three things. We're gonna build an audience. We're gonna generate content for that audience to make them familiar with you, with your products. And then we're gonna incentivize them to come into your sales funnel, which is gonna be a three-step approach. But in the end, they're gonna to go to your web shop on your website and buy products. That's the idea, at least. So step one is building an audience. Audience just means people who have shown interest in you or your product. And it's important that this is your audience. Don't rent an audience. If you're on Instagram or LinkedIn, for example, you may have followers there, but that's not an audience. You don't own them. If you have a newsletter, you own the audience because you have their email addresses. You can contact them anytime. You don't have to use any third-party service. You can just use your email client to get in touch with them. And that's a big asset to have. If you're releasing new products, just send out a newsletter to them and a small percentage of them will probably buy the product if it's interesting for them. Now, an email newsletter isn't going to magically fill up with email addresses. You're going to use channels like Instagram and LinkedIn to funnel users into the newsletter sign-up form. But you want to give them an extra incentive to sign up. And one way to do that is to use time-limited freebies. So let's say you offer every now and again on your newsletter a voucher code that gives 50% or 100% off even for a limited time after they receive the email, 24 hours, for example then people are incentivized to sign up because otherwise they might see the coupon code, but they'll see it too late if they don't get it from the newsletter immediately. Just an extra incentive, but keep in mind, you still have to create valuable content for them to want to sign up in the newsletter in the first place. This brings me to the last part. How can you, as a solo creator, make content efficiently? My recommendation is this. If you're selling creative products to a creative audience, 
they are going to be interested in your journey. At least a lot of them will be. So how about you keep a journal, track your path, your journey on the way to creating these digital products, things you've learned, maybe mistakes you've made. It just gives the marketing a personal touch. If you write down a paragraph now and again of your experiences, how you're feeling, maybe some frustrations, add a picture, a screenshot of the product or, you know, or an intermediate version of the product and say, ah, this is not good enough yet. I'm doing this and that to correct that. It just gives insight into that process. And it's, it's really interesting for people that are in the same industry and probably want to do products just like you are. And you're not losing anything. It's not like a trade secret. You still have to have the skills to do it and the motivation to create that product. So you've got a journal of text and posts. You can use them for Instagram right away. And for LinkedIn, you can post them separately as well. But you can also have a look at LinkedIn newsletters. Take, for example, the best posts uh, from Instagram or just the things that are most valuable from your journal and put them into a bi-weekly, maybe even a monthly newsletter on LinkedIn. Send it out, but don't send all the content out. Send like an excerpt and then say, okay, there's going to be more in my monthly newsletter. That way you get them to sign up as well. And then your newsletter is the place where you let it all out. Show them all the details, the nitty gritty stuff that everyone really wants to see. It's a great way to have a personal marketing approach that doesn't really cost that much time. Journaling is also very good from a business perspective to learn how to do new products, how to do products better. So keeping that information is a great value, great asset for yourself, but it's also really good marketing. And that's basically it. That's all the steps there are to creating a digital product and selling it online. Now all you have to do is go out there and make something. If you have any questions about Paddle or Boathouse, go to boathouse.pro. You'll find a contact link down there. Ask me any questions you have. I'll be happy to help. Bye.